And hello everybody, welcome inside the Lane County Ice Center. My name is Isaac Rosenthal, joined once again by Brent Kelly. It is time for some Oregon Duck Hockey. Glad to be back here and want to take a moment before we do anything else and just express my utmost gratitude to everybody who donated to, shared, liked, even viewed, did anything to boost the impressions of our GoFundMe effort. You guys really came through for us and me, just me personally, it means so much to me that people were willing to support this project I've worked so hard on over the years and we had some software issues last year that kept us offline a little bit and... Ten days ago, I really didn't know if I was going to be standing here uh, bringing you this game. So it just, it means so much absolutely to me, to Brent, to the club, to everybody involved that you guys were able to come through. So absolute shout out to you. You guys are the best. But with that taken care of, let's start to talk about this Ducks hockey team. We'll, we'll briefly first let you know what's going to happen tonight. It's the first time this team has skated together. They had tryouts Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Coaches finalized the roster over the last 48 hours. They have not had so much as a morning skate together as a team. Generals have played a little bit of preseason so far, but pretty pretty raw group themselves. So it is the two uh, the ground shares, to borrow the term from European soccer, the two rink share rink exchange tenants, the Oregon Ducks and the Eugene Generals in town tonight. We will have this game again tomorrow, although that one will be hosted by the Generals. You can catch that one through the Eugene Generals broadcast with my good friend Alex Stimson. And Brent, will bring you in now. Talk a little bit about this Ducks team. Let's first go backwards one year. Last year's team under uh, new coaches, yeah. Uh, Coop Cooper, Lim, Riley, or uh, they came in a little bit, little bit rough to start the year, but then boy, once they once they put it together, they really caught fire. Yeah, you, you can really see a big change in this team right around the halfway mark, and kind of where you want a big second push half to the season. They brought in some new guys like Harrison Cass back on the blue line, and Connor Rendell really made a name for himself on this team. You could really see though that last home stretch to end off the year. This team was absolutely flying on the power play. It seemed like they could win almost any game here in Eugene and on the road. And it was also that big road, road uh, stretch down in uh, Southern L uh, California against UCLA and USC. So they really got their, their act together around the second half of the season. And then when they came back up, had, had a really intense weekend against uh, Washington, battle for the I-5 Cup. That was a great game to watch and to commentate and watch and play. That was an awesome weekend. And they kind of came into the playoffs on a, on a bit of a high note, but sadly couldn't uh, get the job done in the playoffs. But it kind of sprung board this, this uh, Oregon team into a big summer. A lot of new faces, a lot of new names to this team. Like you said, they just finalized the roster just recently, but they're definitely a positive momentum with this Oregon team coming into this season. So a lot of op optimism around this team. Yeah, absolutely, and with good reason. We, we saw the coaching staff giving kind of a little bit of updates uh, on the recruiting class throughout the, the off season and seeing this roster come together, the first thing that leaps out at you, it's gotten a, a little bit smaller than it was first thing this morning, but just the, the, the size of it, it's a bigger number of guys than we've seen in, in a while to start the season for the Ducks, and they do often tend to pick up one or two throughout the year, although I don't know, Brent, it might be tough for somebody who's not on the ice for the Ducks right now to crack this roster. Yeah, and we've kind of seen, like you said in years before, where it's even harder just for the team to ice a full lineup to start off the year and where they start off so rusty because like other schools you said they already have time to kind of practice and get into to some sort of training camp and but this year like you said the a lot more ducks out there uh, tonight and in general and yeah it's going to be hard to crack this lineup because it's a lot more skilled ducks team that we've seen in years before and let's talk about the pack eight conference now pack eight I don't think there's been exactly eight teams in the Pac-8 for as long as I've been associated with Oregon hockey, but it is entirely a misnomer now. We're up to 12 teams 
in the Pac-8. It's the folks you know about. It's Washington, Washington State, Oregon, Cal, UCLA, USC, Arizona State. But then some newcomers, Boise State, Eastern Washington, Western Washington, San Jose State, San Diego State, Boise State, and, and especially those California schools. San Jose State and San Diego State could really boost the profile of this conference. We saw San Jose State come in here last year for non-conference action. Ducks got uh, two big wins out of those games, but it was what San Jose State would have said was a down year. They think they're back this year. San Diego State is always good. Cal, Cal going to be good this year. Washington's going to be good this year. This is as confident as the Ducks have been. Excuse me. As confident as the Ducks have been going into the season, and it's still going to be a massive challenge because the league has just gotten so much deeper. We are going to take a quick break here and leave you with a look at the Ducks' schedule. We'll be back with you a little bit to do a little more preview before the game, and then we'll have game action.
Hello again, everybody. Isaac Rosenthal joined by Brent Kelly. The clock above the scoreboard showing now just under 12 minutes before we get going. So we thought we would run through this duck hockey schedule for the 2018 season. Boy, 2018. When did we get to here? And it is almost October already. So it's going to start off tonight and tomorrow night. A couple of 735 starts against the Eugene Generals. Ducks will get their lines in order, their system in order. They'll learn how to play with each other and then they get right into the meat of their schedule. October 5th and 6th, they are at Eastern Washington in Cheney, Washington. Then they come home for the first two games of the I-5 Cup and I don't get to set the goals for the team, Brent, but if I do, getting the I-5 Cup back, that's goal number one for yeah. this season. It has been north of the Columbia for far too long, and it's, it's got to come home. It's yeah. time. And it's a huge test for this team right off the bat to start off the season against Washington at home. Last year, they played Washington a little towards the end of the season, so the Ducks were basically at their full strength last year, so this year is going to be a huge test. Maybe try to get those two wins and, like you said, bring that cup right back home. And then right after that, another two home games against Washington State state on October 19th and 20th and then two more home games against Boise State. Boise State is coming back here in the Eugene at October 26th and the 27th. And we'll, we'll stop you there to talk about Boise State for a moment. They like Eastern Washington newcomers to this Pac-8 conference. It's supposed to be a pretty good program they got out in Boise and the Ducks actually have some connections there. You're going to see them wearing number 10 tonight on the first line for the Ducks. Connor Hornline actually a Eugene native and a former junior general. Played all his kitty hockey in this rink. A Boise State transfer himself, so maybe some connections there. Then November 2nd, the alumni game. That's always fun, and I, for one, am looking forward to seeing Trevor Shaw <laughs> and A.J. Bernhardt play with each other. A.J., for the last couple years, has taken it upon himself to skate circles around everybody at the alumni game, and I think he and Trevor may have some fun together at the alumni game if A.J. is able to make it. A.J., if you're watching, we certainly hope you do make it. After that alumni game, excuse me there, you may be able to hear in my voice I have been coughing all week and don't have much of a voice left, but I wouldn't miss this for the world. So <laughs> bear with me, it may sound like I've been smoking a pack of days since the Johnson administration, <laughs> but this is life. So after the alumni game, November 9th and 10th, uh, Veterans Day uh, appro uh, approximate, Ducks will be in Bellingham, Washington against Western Washington, and then five days after that, it really gets into the meat of the schedule, a critical stretch for the Ducks in the Bay Area. November 15th, they're at Cal. 16th and 17th, they're at San Jose State. And then back to finish it up in Berkeley on the 18th. That's going to be a tough test. Yeah, that's the most brutal part of the schedule. That's what we were talking about right before we got on air when we were looking, taking a look at this schedule. That huge stretch in Northern California and then also coming right off the bat from Western Washington, two games up there, and then the four in Northern California. That's going to be huge for the Ducks. We'll see how well they'll, you know, face there at the middle of the season. So then after that, uh, and then we take a winter break, bit of a winter break after the Western, Western Washington series. Let everyone go home, see the family. And then January 11th and 12th, the Ducks are back in Boise. January 19th and 20th at San Diego. Now those two will be great games down there in San Diego. <laughs> And then the Pac-8 season concludes for the Ducks with the last two games of the I-5 Cup in Seattle. So it really, I mean, it's, it's so much pressure on those first two Washington games. We talk about this every year for the team that is home to start the I-5 Cup. If you can get that home sweep, all you got to do is get a split on the road. If you split that first home game or, God forbid, get swept, you really are up against it with your two road games left. But if you can get two strong wins, you just got to get a result on the road. And how good would that feel to bring that I-5 Cup home? After that, new feature in the uh, in, in the the way that the season works for the Pack Eight this year. They've actually pushed the. Um 
push the Pac-8 playoffs back a little bit. So one kind of tune-up weekend for the Ducks against Santa Rosa Junior College. And then starting February 8th, 9th, and 10th in South Lake Tahoe, California, the Pac-8 playoffs. The Ducks will have to finish in the top four of six teams in the Pac-8 North to qualify for the playoffs. And it's a loaded Pac-8 Pac North. Boise State, Eastern Washington, Western Washington, 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 Washington State, and the Ducks. We're going to take another quick break. I'm going to try and figure out how to make it through this broadcast, and we'll be back with you for some game action. Thanks so much. Don't you go anywhere.
Alrighty, well we are back, just about set for game time, and hey, look at that in the top right corner. We got a clock this year. And that clean scoreboard. And again, those the, uh, those two items, that clock and the clean scoreboard, would not be possible without your very generous contributions to the GoFundMe. Uh, enabled us to get uh, get new software. It's got some nice fancy tools. The clock will be unofficial, but it's gonna be pretty darn close. I can reset it pretty easily, and we are looking at making even more improvements. I don't wanna spill the beans too much on what that's gonna look like, but we, uh, we're close to a few other things that have been goals for a while. If you are interested in doing anything at all to help us, you can get in touch with us any way you want. Comment on any Facebook or Twitter post that the Ducks make. Shoot me a message on, on Twitter at Isaac M. Rosenthal. Email the Ducks Oregon, uh, Oregon Hockey Coordinator at gmail.com. If you think you'd be interested in volunteering with the broadcast, we could use some assistance on production. And the team's got plenty of other jobs they can send your way as well. Let's start talking about this game specifically a little bit. We'll go through those lines for the Ducks as they have been presented to us. Connor Hornline, Connor Rendell, and Kurt Fortney are going to be the top line for the Ducks. Jack Garrity, Austin Charnhorn, Harrison Cass, the second line, Derek Armstrong, Luke Chamberlain, and Nathan Lutz, line three, and then Dylan Conway, Charles Gearing, and Peyton Barkley round out the offense, the deep pairs for the Ducks. Zach Schultz and Austin Pontz. How about that combination of names? One two combo. At the top deep pair. Warren Berg and Nick Power, another great name. The second deep pair. And then Sebastian Uloa and Brian Freitag, the third deep pair. Dressed goalies tonight are Grayson Parks, who will get the start and Jackson Howery, Noah Rosenberg up here in the media area with us, along with Leon Daphne, who is helping out on camera tonight, and we very much appreciate that assistance. We're gonna take another quick break here, but a real quick one just for the anthem, and then we'll be back with you for some real hockey very shortly.
All right, it is time for some puck. Again, the starting lineup for the Ducks as relayed to us. Kurt Fortney, Connor Rundell, Connor Hornline offensively. Austin Paltz, Zach Schultz defensively. Grayson Parks between the pipes. Grayson, the goaltender, one of the recruits that coaches Orr and Lim were super excited about coming in. I mean, as is everybody. Everybody on this team, you know, makes you excited if you're into duck hockey, if you follow this team for a while. There's just so much optimism behind that bench and in that locker room that this is really going to be a season that could qualify as special. But a lot of work before we get to any, using any superlative terms like that. Let's focus just on the next 60 minutes in front of us. What are you looking for tonight from the Ducks? Well, this Ducks team, obviously, as you can see from the bench, has a very deep bench, so hopefully a lot of depth scoring, and we'll see what these new guys can do for the Ducks about mainly just uh, new faces in uh, Eugene, Oregon. So we'll see how well they do tonight. So it's Chamberlain to dig in for the faceoff for the Ducks, and we are underway. Here, hit thrown right in front of the Ducks bench. Oregon comes away with the puck. Armstrong taps it forward to Lutz, so excuse me, it's the uh, different line that was filled out for us that I think it's in the third line out. starting out. Yeah, it is line number three. Armstrong there. played uh, last year on D, this year on offense. Yeah, he's played uh, a couple of different positions for the Ducks. Big body, strong defenseman. Duck couldn't get the shot there, but kept around the goal by the Ducks. Still trying to keep possession down low. They'll have to go to work for it. General's trying to flip it out of the zone. Ducks keeping it alive at the blue line. Throw the shot in, looking towards a deflection for Nathan Lutz. And still with the puck are the Ducks. Almost a full minute of possession here to start the game, and now finally poked out by the Generals. But they have trouble getting it through the neutral zone. Line change for the Ducks. Taken behind the net, it's Austin Poltz. Don't get too used to these name and number combinations, by the way. Shot from the general save, rebound is there. Loose and taken away again by the Ducks. Just getting back to that point. Guys may end up with different numbers once the uh, New Jerseys get in. We'll keep you updated. Warren Berg with the shot from the blue line. And a couple of Ducks colliding there. Again, we mentioned they have not played a game, a practice, even a morning skate together as a team. They were trying out on Wednesday. That is life in the pack eight. Warren Berg cannot quite keep that one in the zone, but does keep possession. Ducks having to go backwards a little bit. Connor Rendell there. Rendell was one of the huge mid-season additions to this Ducks team last year. Warren Berg uh, not hooked apparently through the middle uh, neutral zone there, just kind of a stick check. Behind the net, there's Rendell using his body, but Generals come away with the puck, almost knocking it right to Hornline. Shot there, and Parks makes the save, shrugged it away into the corner. Now yeah, we already see early in this game, Ducks new, new look defense, smooth skating so far. In line with the puck. He's going to take it through the neutral zone himself. Now up to Rendell, but got it right back and trying the give and go. Couldn't control the puck. Hook forward. Half chance here for the Generals if they find the puck, but good job by the D Ducks defense. And a save from Parks. Is that a first whistle? Yeah, first whistle, whistle was 17 12. Left in the first. Parks is, uh, looked strong at one point, Blake save right in the slot and had his glove in a great position and uh, right, pretty aggressive too on the shot on top of the crease too. And so Ducks defense and goaltending looking strong early on. Across the blue line again, poked away by the Generals. Now moving forward, now here's a chance again for the Generals through the zone, Cody Oblovsky. Arbilovsky. That's a lot of syllables to try and catch on one quick glance at a roster. Preseason for us up to up here in the booth as well. 
backwards with it towards their own zone go the generals then they'll dump it off the boards almost creating a shooting chance there but the ducks get to the puck Warren Berg forward tapped for Charles Gearing. Jens take it away. They get a shot through and a save. Dakota Hen with the shot for the Generals. Behind the net and having to pick up his stick was a Uloa there for the Ducks. Yeah, a few miscues by both teams in both their zones and kind of uh, expected for such an early game for both teams. Ducks trying to move on the breakout now. Still with it is uh, Garrity there for the Ducks. Through the middle, couldn't connect with Rendell. 15.42 officially left. Clock is a little bit off. Still working out the kinks of starting and stopping. New responsibility for me this year. Big hit by Poltz. And Generals player slow to get up. Meanwhile, though, the Gens kept the puck. Shot did not get through. And then a long pass there. Going to be icing if the Ducks don't beat it out. And, well. Beat him by just a stride. And a talk on Parks, uh, new Ducks goalie for a little bit. Uh, good stance and it takes up a lot of net. Kind of a taller goalie for the Ducks at 6'1", 180. And great form already and nice and aggressive on top of the crease and always have a good eye for the shot early on in the game. Let's do that face off again. Referee saw something he didn't like. We're going to take a moment to try and reset our clock here. As the Ducks move through, it's Rendell. Rendell with a shot high and over the cage. Penalty on the play. Two minutes for tripping. I believe that's number 24 for the Gens. So Devin 24 Dunn. for the Gens is Devin Dunn. And first look at the Ducks power play this year. You think in this kind of a setting easier or easier or harder on the power play with so little time with your teammates? Uh, probably a little bit easier because you just want to maybe keep things simple on the power play. We saw the Ducks in the second half of last year have such an effective power play with Rendell, Berg, Lutz all around. So we'll see what they can do with kind of limited practice time, but as we see on this power play setup, we got Berg on top of the point, Cass out there as well with Rendell and Fortney. So yeah, interesting look for the power play and we'll see how well they execute. Back underway, puck back to the blue line for Berg. Berg gives it up half without a shot at a shot now. Harrison Cass down low. Horn line back over to Cass. Cass back up top to Berg. Berg back to Harrison Cass. Across, good find on the pass. The shot hits some kind of a medal and cleared away. Only very partially now cleared the rest of the way by the Jens. Yeah, it's kind of hard for Cass down there. He's on the right wing as a right-handed shot. Usually maybe you want to get a lefty there on the right, uh, on the right side, but... Uh, Let's we'll see how they break out and regroup. Answer the question on the stream. We will be streaming every Ducks home game this season and possibly some road games, although the conference really trying to get home teams to do their streams this year. But every home game, that's the plan. And if they let us broadcast from Tahoe, we'll broadcast from Tahoe as well. Past the halfway mark on this Ducks power play. A couple of opportunities, but no major scoring chances yet, really. One rung off the post. Armstrong will meet that one at the blue line, backhands it in. Jens trying to move out, and now a chance. Oh, nearly got it in front of Garrity. 
Kept alive just barely and then into the corner. Standing in the box is done. 15 seconds left on the man advantage. Behind the net. Ducks trying to get a shot. They throw it right in goal instead. That was Austin Charnhold. Now another shot comes through just wide. Back to even strength. But the Ducks still threatening. 12.44 left in the first period. Big hit thrown there by the Generals. And do we have a penalty? Uh, I didn't really see the call. I just saw a face-off coming outside. So... Maybe they just, maybe just a quick whistle because the puck was on the board. That's kind of a weird call. We had Ducks uh, second unit out there, couldn't really get a whole lot going, but maybe just trying to get things situated in their first game. So, like you might have expected, a little sloppy through the first opening six, seven minutes here. But seeing a little bit of shades of what this Ducks team is going to look like. Across the blue line, Ducks and Bauman for the general shot. One time, a good save, Parks. Point blank, too. I have to say, on the setup for that shot, I thought I was going to be calling a goal there. Parks did a great job to get in the way of it. Moving in now are the Generals, trying to center again. Taking it behind the net is Arbolovsky. All the way back up to the point. It's the Generals setting up, now deflected. Good job, Parks. Yeah, in great position by Parks in that sequence. Ducks having just getting out of the zone right now, and Generals turning the other way. And just on side are the Generals. Great opportunity, but then they couldn't get the shot off. Behind the net, it's going to carry him all the way around for Dakota Hen. Now trying to get the shot through and wide, but a great opportunity again for Marbalovsky. 18 and white, he's one to watch. Possession now for the Ducks. Warren Berg, we saw him carry the puck as a defenseman a lot last year. Loose in front and still bouncing around there. Almost sent the other way for the Generals. That's going to be not icing. It is icing. Shouldn't have been icing. But we'll take it as the Duck broadcast. Yeah, Ducks had a little bit of trouble getting out of their own zone, but Parks stood tall and a few really good saves. Generals were finding those soft spaces on the ice, definitely around the slot, and one point blank save on the cross crease pass. And so Parks getting into the game right now. I believe that some of the Parks family were among our GoFundMe donors. And again, means just so much. Yeah, it really helps out the broadcast too. Everything is running really smoothly. Back underway. Ducks get it off the face off. Shot Rendell scores! Easy play for Rendell. Yeah, it was a face-off win, and before we could see anything, Rendell just walked right into the slot and ripped it top left. Nothing that General's goalie could have done on that one. And yeah, when you find that soft space right in the slot, you rip it home, and first goal of the season for the Ducks is a right here in the 10.43 left in the first. <laughs> So Connor Rendell for the Ducks puts him up one nothing just about halfway through the opening frame. And now loose puck is gonna be pushed back all the way, forcing Generals Captain Jackson Bauman to go backwards in his own zone. Now the Generals have it in the attacking zone and Parks will pounce on it. I have a feeling that uh, 
Grayson's going to be a fun one to watch. Yeah. Based on these first nine minutes and 54 seconds. Yeah, just like his form already, looking strong so far in the game. And you can always tell when a goalie's locked in, when they're on top of the crease and their positioning is really good. Yeah, and the Ducks have had good goaltending over the years. Noah Rosenberg, a couple of seats over to my left, and Jackson Howery back in the goal crease this year. Ben Green as well, and the, uh, the gold standard for Ducks goaltending over the last 10 years probably has been Danny Cockrell. But we'll see what we're saying about that at the end of the year. Grayson looks like he's got a great chance to write his own name into the Duck Hockey history books as he makes another fine save. And we'll let the clock roll five seconds to catch up. 9.30 on the official clock. That looks like generals are kind of making their offensive push when Duck's bottom two lines are out there. and. They're looking to even up the score. General's an independent junior hockey team this year and last. Play other various Ooh. tiers of junior hockey teams. That's going to be called for an infraction. As soon as the Ducks touch the puck, General's goalie heads to the bench. Shot into the corner. And Jens will keep it alive. Going all the way back. Got about 300 in the stands. Thank you. 8.59 uh, 8 officially left. Interference is the penalty against Nathan Lutz. And just had rink exchange royalty in the booth. Always good to hear from Earl. And he tells us about 300 in the stands. Great turnout tonight. Hope to have another great turnout tomorrow. And every single game this season, you can follow the Ducks. Uh, keep an eye on their schedule at OregonDucksHockey.com. Right now, some of those game times are TBA. We'll have to work that out with the Generals. The first penalty-killing opportunity for the Ducks, and it's going to lead to some offense, perhaps. Has his feet taken out from under him, did Connor Hornline. But immediately, the Ducks, with a little bit of pressure while short-handed, now they'll just... Go back, retreat to the blue line, let the Generals get set up on their power play. Yeah, aggressive PK, uh, really putting a lot of pressure on the Generals D, and here's another stretch pass. And now a two hole, oh, almost a two on one, but Rendell lost the puck. Opportunity for the Generals short, uh, and the power play rather. And it's shot into the netting behind the goal. 71 of you on the stream right now. And whether or not you are here for the Ducks or here for the Generals, we're so happy to have you with us. If you want to let us know where you're watching from, if it's anywhere interesting, and I'm sure it is, we'd love to hear from you in the comments, see how far our broadcast is reaching. I know we've been as far away as Norway and Switzerland before. If anyone can beat that, we'll be very impressed. 58 seconds left on the penalty to Nathan Lutz. Hit thrown there, and that will get the Ducks possession of the puck. They're not going to bother clearing it. They want possession shorthanded. Trying to get it into the slot. Taken away by the Generals. Here they come through the neutral zone. Offside, though, if they touch the puck, and instead the Gens will get it. Well, then it's inadvertently touched from his bottom by Jared Coday. Yeah, Ducks putting a lot of pressure on the Generals' D. They're a lot smaller as a whole as a team. And Ducks uh, have a few big boys out there, so might as well put some pressure in and make something happen shorthanded. And only 27 seconds left on the Lutz penalty. Hearing from some of you in SoCal, Tacoma, Missouri. 7.14 officially left in this first period. Nathan Lutz standing in the box, six seconds left 
on the five on four for the Generals. Oh, and almost the Ducks were nearly sprung the other way. Jen's trying to find a shot off the side of the net. Parks had that angle covered, I think. Here's big Derek Armstrong, one of several graduate students on this Ducks team, and a penalty coming up against the Generals. Parks out of his net. In front, looking for the one-timer tap in. Couldn't get it home. It's going to be a slash on the Generals. I believe number seven, Brandon Manthe for the gen, so another Ducks power play coming up, their second of the first period. And we'll see if uh, Coach Oren Lim maybe gave them some instructions on the bench to move it around and you know maybe connect for one more goal. The Generals have a shorter bench and for the most part it's a younger team as well. And the combination of those two teams, those two things rather, you really don't want to have to play shorthanded. Already their second time doing so. They did kill that first penalty. A little bit more patience already through these first 20 seconds for the Ducks, a little bit more shape. Shot through from the top of the, uh, top of the slot blue line. And now it's the Generals trying to go the other way shorthanded. Just on side, but they couldn't control the puck. Had a chance at a tap in there. Another save from Parks and another one. And now it's the Generals turn to be ultra aggressive. They Kind of caught the Ducks D on surprise and, you know, had a few good scoring chances off that. But right back into the attacking zone go the Ducks. The shot wide into the side netting. Yeah, we're seeing Connor Rundell kind of play the slot on this power play. He he did that a lot uh, last year and found a ton of success uh, kind of popping out for those one-timers and those passes right in the slot. And then we also saw Trevor Shot kind of playing down low. So we're seeing some similar players play some similar roles to last year's team. He's in front. Ducks have a chance. Couldn't get it. Shot now ripped through. Rebound is there. And it goes wide. And, uh, Generals netminder Royce couldn't control it. 52 seconds left still on the man advantage. Shot through and a good save there from the Generals netminder. Yeah, the C9 shot. He had about three bodies right in front. And that's Nick Power and Austin Poltz running the point for the Ducks. I'll say one other thing for those of you who are watching. If you are... Uh if you're a parent and I am saying your son's name wrong, please do let me know. It is the only way I'm going to find out, especially if it is a, uh, a Generals player. I don't get their names as much. i got two rosters to learn today, but let me know if I'm saying it wrong. I'll try to do better. 37 seconds left still on the man advantage. Good keep in by Poltz. Armstrong now. Armstrong, the only person on the ice to have checked another man through a pane of glass. <laughs> Mac Fair of the Washington Huskies will always be remembered as the guy Derek checked through the glass. Same right over there. 500,000 people too know about that. Yes, yeah, seen, uh, seen by kind of a lot of people. Got kind of a few, few views on that one. Thrown in there it was Nick Power wearing the number 12 for the Ducks. And that's out of play. Another thing, again, we talked about trying to get someone to run the laptop for us. Let me tell you where we're at right now. We've got the technology to, have to give you guys replays. It is just way too much to try and do while we're also calling a game. I, I looked it up for this program. A tutorial video to demonstrate how to do a replay. The tutorial video was half an hour. So it's doable if you think you're into that kind of thing and you live in the Eugene area. We would love to have some help. I would love to, to learn it with you, but a little bit too much for me to do while I'm trying to call the game. Four minutes left, uh, excuse me, 4.10 left, officially. Bouncing around behind the net. Ducks trying to reach for it. Generals trying to pick it up. It's Jared Coday. 
And Kone will just flip that one towards Parks, and Parks will glove it. 3.51 left. And we're getting we're international now on the broadcast. Member of the Minchin clan watching from New Westminster, BC. Stoughton, Wisconsin as well. And another save from Parks. 3.41 officially left. We'll let the clock run down. Yeah, good strategy for the generals right now, just kind of throwing shots from all angles. That's a, you know, not a bad idea to kind of throw a goalie off their game, just throwing it from bad angles. It's always hard to get adjusted to your position. Yeah, only about a million hockey coaches over the course of the years have just said, throw it at the net. Long pass there, and um, the horn line couldn't quite corral it, but still possession for the Ducks. Now it's Rendell throwing a shot and it's deflected up into the corner. Rendell will reach out, keep it alive, throws it behind the net. Horn line and Rhodes for the Generals going to get it. Into the corner, they take out the shovels now. Horn line tried to get the pass, but hit a foot. 3-0-3, first time shot, loose, deflected, again off the side, netting for Rendell, he'll throw it toward the corner, but having to go all the way back into the neutral zone to get it is Zach Schultz, Schultz and Pultz. Yeah, that was Love a... that deep air. Yeah, that too, and that was Fortney, he was on the side of the net, almost had a great opportunity for a goal moments ago. disappears a little bit when it's along those near these near side boards don't have quite the height we would like deflected into the corner that'll count as a save for uh, the netminder Roysom Garrity backhands it to keep it alive still oh Ooh. big collision right in front of the boards there sends the generals the other way then another hit yeah, that was bombing for the for the Jens, the captain. I believe that was on 24 for the Ducks. That was on Schultz. These two collision. teams, uh, especially in their second matchup last year, did have some altercations. Yeah, and it only takes one hit to get things going, uh, especially in the pack eight. So, you know, always watch to see the physicality pick up after a huge hit. We'll see what that does to the game. A hit and a goal. Both can change the complexion of the game in a big way. Thrown in. Parks will just settle it down. And oh, lost his stick there, did power. And now Warren Berg. Berg will try to get around General's player there. Lost the puck, though. And Jen's moving out now. 110 left in this first period. Here's an opportunity for Lutz. A shot and a save. Yeah, that Lutz shot kind of reminded me of last year. I remember he had a few goals streaking He's got down a the left side. shot, doesn't he? Yeah, going far side. See the Schultz Pultz deep pairing out again. They're playing a lot this first period. First deep pair for the Ducks. Under a minute now left in the first period. Our clock is pretty darn close, but not exactly Ooh. real time. That was a huge hit by Pultz on the Generals. Going to get a number on that one. Oh, and a good job there to come and take that puck away by Schultz. Now Lutz, Lutz with another shot. That one is saved. 35 seconds left. There's Schultz giving Pultz a fist bump on that one. A little, you know, payback for the uh, hit he took a moment ago. Oops. 
Rendell trying to get it behind the net. Also there was Fortney. Ducks with possession. Shot blisters through the zone from Pultz at the point. Behind the net in front of opportunity. Backhand and horn line. And saved by Roysom. Yeah, horn line right in front of the goal crease. Could have had a chance for a quick little wrister, but opted to go to the backhand and try to roof it. And good on Roysom. Good positioning there. Much like Parks for the Ducks. Big goaltender, aggressive on top of the crease. Kind of similar goalie stance as well, too. Courtney there. Trying to find something. Five seconds left. We're a little behind on our clock. 2-1, and that will do it for the first period of play. So through 20 minutes, the Ducks have a 1-0 lead over the Generals. The goal from Connor Rendell. You got any thoughts on the opening 20? Uh, good play from both sides. I thought Generals had some good pressure at moments during the first period uh, where they caught the Ducks in their own zone. Ducks looked pretty good on two power plays, especially the first one looked pretty good. and. Uh, just got to throw it from anywhere on net. And Ducks D looking very mobile as well today, too. So we'll look to see uh, how the adjustments come into play for the second period. All righty. Well, we are going to take a break and get you a little hydrated. I will leave you uh, with the intermission with the Oregon Ducks hockey theme song composed and performed by Tanner Ferris.
Back with you here. Just want to check in. Six minutes or so still left in the intermission, but we've had 20 minutes to look at both of these teams, and we're gonna now put the uh, put you. Make you do your job as the color commentator. What have you seen? I know it's only 20 minutes, but what have you seen from this Ducks team? I really like the defense so far. Uh, not so much. I mean, their defense has been solid in their own zone, but especially in the offensive zone, keeping pucks in. And all these new D-men have a really good reach out there on the ice. And so I kind of like this new D look up because, like we kind of said before, Oregon has always had really good goaltending and pretty good offense here and there. I mean, a lot of people in the ACHA, I mean, a lot of teams can put up the goals, but it's just defense could, was always kind of a weak spot for Oregon until last season midway when they got Harrison Cass and kind of solidified that defense a little bit. And Warren Burke stepped up too with Armstrong. And now this year, uh, defense is uh, so solid that Armstrong moves Armstrong back to forward and got Berg in there too. So and I like Schultz and Poltz as the first D-line. I saw the coaches really trusted them, throwing them out there a lot. And the forwards, I think, are doing well too. Uh, they just got to kind of work. A lot of miscommunication on for both teams, it looks like, so far very early on in the season. And, yeah, and the generals, uh, you know, they're just kind of going to throw everything on net, on parks, and Oregon, maybe if they just kind of connect on their passes a few few more times, those look to be, you know, better scoring opportunities for the Ducks. So maybe just crisper passing, that comes along with more practice and more team play. And uh, who knows, maybe these lines will probably be way different next game or even next week. So... Yeah, we'll like to see how the chemistry kind of builds with this team, and so far, so good for the Ducks. These lines may be different next period, the yeah. way things <laughs> work here, but no, I, I think you're right, and I think that, it, you know, those, the problems that are there, they will work themselves out. You, yeah, you, just a little miscommunication. You and, can't uh, expect a team that has not had a practice to be the best at communicating with each other. But to be fair, if you go back to last season, like we said, it was even kind of more brutal last year as a team that barely had, literally straight from right. tryout right into the first game. This time, a little bit, I think just more skill this year and, and a deeper bench, too. That's always going to help, too. That kind of covers up a lot of mistakes when you have a deep bench. More guys are fresh and, the, you know, a little bit more cleaner play out there. So, yeah, we'll look to see how they kind of respond in the second. Yeah, compared to last year where it was, like you said, it was the same deal that came right from tryouts, except instead of coming right from tryouts and having four full lines, three full D pairs, two goaltenders and a scratch goalie, you know, that is a, that's a full legitimate roster yeah. that the Ducks have right now. And, and it's, you know, it could get a little bit bigger. We know, um, like we said, Liam Dauphiny is helping us out with the camera tonight. We hope to see him on the ice sooner rather than later. Uh, but it's just, it's it, it, it's not a reality the Ducks have had that you've got, you know, enough enough guys that you can ice full lines. It makes things so different. It gives you different tools as a coach. Of course, you never want to have to bench anybody. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if somebody's giving you reason, if somebody's not following direction, last year you really didn't have that nuclear option as a coach because there just weren't enough bodies. And, it, you know, you if you did that, you were putting your team at a big disadvantage. If the Ducks can get a couple of more guys, you know, interested they always manage to find somebody throughout you know uh, throughout the season then all of a sudden you throw scratches into the mix you guys have to earn their spots on every line and just every makes game. the whole team better too. It, it makes the whole team better the whole culture of the program is just entirely changed from what it was you know 18 months ago before uh, before or and Lim were involved so we're real excited we're gonna take another quick break but only about two and a half minutes are left before the second period starts, so get yourself a drink. Don't go too far.
So as we're just about set for the second period, Brett, give me one goal for the Ducks for this, this second period. What, what's one thing you want to see? Uh, probably more shots on that and just connecting their passes in the offensive zone. Like we kind of said in the intermission, just a little bit sloppy from the team. But I like what I saw from the defense, very mobile and good positioning pretty much so far. Like we said, Parks really had one or one, I think two pretty point blank chances and able to come up for the task on those. So Parks uh, just make sure he sees the puck at all times and uh, make lanes clear. But yeah, one goal for this Ducks is just uh, better execution and uh, sharper passing. Alrighty, well, tough to argue with that. Let's see, it looks like it's going to be the um, quote-unquote third line for the Ducks once again to start this second period. Size, veteran poise, and youthful enthusiasm on that third line. And penalty right off the draw. Right off the bat. I don't think I've ever seen that. I think that was the quickest penalty thing I've ever seen. <laughs> two two seconds into the into the second period. Wow. It's always interesting. That was on Chamberlain for the Ducks. So Derek Armstrong pressuring at the back, and now Nathan Lutz takes it away. Lutz trying to get it to Armstrong, couldn't get it on his stick. Almost a shorty. Yeah, another aggressive power play. I mean, sorry, penalty kill for the Ducks, like we saw in the first, pressuring their D pretty hard. Swept around there by Zach Schultz, but it gets up to the blue line, taken away by the Generals, only until Nathan Lutz, uh, excuse me, that was... That was Schultz with Lutz. Schultz before it got it to Lutz, intercepted. Schultz and Pultz, 21 and 24 for tonight. We'll see if that's what they end up wearing when all the new jerseys get in. Best dressed team in the pack eight. Thanks to Rebirth Sports. Great duck jerseys. You can buy them at the Ducks games. And yet another reason to come out and see us at their ink exchange. 54 seconds left on the Chamberlain interference minor. Generals haven't had much offense to shout about on this power play that they got. Probably the best time to take a penalty, I guess, if you want to look at it that way. You have your penalty killers with the freshest legs they're going to have. Maybe reaching for that one. 18.25 left in period number two. Shot flutters through after a deflection. Didn't challenge Grayson Parks. 15 seconds left on the minor. Code A for the Generals. Turning, tried to fire it towards net. Now the puck is loose and it slid through the crease, but it goes wide. Back up to the point. Wide again. Chamberlain out of the box. Now we're back to five on five. 17.54 left in period number two. The Ducks have had probably the best chance of the period so far, despite the fact that pretty much all of it has been a general's power play. Played off the boards. Horn line. Horn line stops, goes the other way, retains possession. Then up to Rendell. Rendell spins around, tried to get it back to Horn line, and they do get it to him. Horn line flipping it through, and a shot, and a save. Yeah, that was a Horn line with a great little drop pass. And I believe that might have been Lutz or... Uh, I think it was Garrity with or, the yeah, shot. Yeah, Garrity with the shot. That was a great drop pass to him, and nice little play on those two. Somebody else chiming in from L.A. A lot of Southern California represented up in the broadcast booth, actually. That's what we like to see. <laughs> Both Brent and myself and our cameraman for the day. 
A couple of uh, Anaheim Duck fans, myself a Los Angeles King fan, and we managed to not kill each other for 60 minutes a night. Harrison Cass. Cass at a Newton, Connecticut, graduate student, 5'10", 175. Great mid-season addition last year to this program. And having to work to get it out of the zone for the Generals there was Jacob Rhodes. Now an opportunity, maybe, and going to be a penalty coming up. Looks like it's going to be two minutes for tripping on Yola. So uh, two, two penalties for the Ducks early in the second. Not a good start for them playing shorthanded so early on. But we did see they are pretty ultra aggressive on their PK, so look out for some scoring chances <laughs> for the Ducks to say. Get away with that against the Generals. It might be a different story against the uh, the Pack 8 teams, but we'll see. We hope to see as little of the penalty killing unit as possible. Always been a bit of an issue for the Ducks, a lot less so last year than in years past. Discipline much improved under the Orrin Lim administration, but still penalties at the wrong times a few times last season. Here's an opportunity for Hornline. Short-handed, throws it kind of haphazardly toward goal. And oh, it's gonna be kept and played by Royce from there. Didn't wanna hold on to it. Now a chance in front. Good job to prevent the shooting opportunity there, but the Ducks still with possession shorthanded. 15.30 left in the period, a minute and two seconds left on the man advantage. Yeah, Rendell and Horline, two of uh, Oregon's premier scores are actually, uh, or sorry, first line forwards are out there on the penalty kill, creating some good chances. They've been playing on the penalty kill a lot tonight. Shot for the Generals, high over the cage, into the netting. Quick shot there, I think that was Bauman. Yeah, he had some time and space and just sailed it about three feet over the net. I think if he had that one back, might have maybe aimed a little bit lower next time. 15.08 officially left on the clock, so we'll hold off just a second before we start ours and try and make it match as best we can. Nathan Lutz pokes that away. Lutz and Chamberlain shorthanded. Chopped around, didn't manage to carry its way around. Now the Generals with a chance on the power play. 25 seconds left on it to break out. Nearly pickpocketed. Instead, they almost get a two on one. Now it's sent the length of the ice and cleared. 13 seconds left on the man advantage. Through the neutral zone, Jens lost the puck. Now it's cleared just as the penalty expired. And out of the box is Uloa. Oh, there it is, Nathan Lutz, or excuse me, Harrison Cass. One time shot, save made, Roysom. Well done, sir. Yeah, Roysom had to take a quick peek behind him, but a uh, good position and quick shot by Garrity off a quick one-timer and a good passing play by Cass, able to find a streaking Garrity just down the right wing and good save by Roysom. Cass, real experienced veteran on this team. Back underway again. Generals just trying to get it into the duck zone. Garrity pokes that forward, manages to control it, and almost flips it around. Generals player. They get tangled up, stick goes flying. 
13.50 left in the period. Generals back to full strength as Dunn had to go pick his stick up and then get back in the play. Now the Ducks are sprung the other way. Harrison Cass again. Cass across the slot and they couldn't tap it home. Boy, does Harrison Cass pass the puck well. Yeah, he was actually looking off Roysom and uh, made a move to the backhand and passed cross crease. And, and, and you have to duck. respect his shot there if you're the goaltender, but... Yeah, exactly, and he just couldn't, had a wide open net too. Royston couldn't get across, but Ducks player, and Generals player kind of prevented the shot down there too. Big hit thrown there by Hunter Boyvin. Generals trying to get it in front. They do have a loose puck in front over the net, and the Ducks get to come away with possession. Chopping at it through the neutral zone are the Generals. Arbolovsky on horn line. A couple of hockey names there. Here are the Gens. Poked away. Good job defensively by Nick Power. Horn line now. Dumped in. Chasing it is Fortney. One timer wide. Rebound. Loose somewhere still. Hornline has it. Trying to get it to Rendell. Couldn't get a stick blade in the right position. The Ducks go back with it through the neutral zone. Wow, I don't know how that did not go in. It was a quick shot by Rendell. And here comes Fortney. Loose in front. Rebound is there. And it's gobbled up by Royson. He's doing a great job tonight. Yeah, Royson, uh, what a great two sequences there by the Generals goalie. Uh, had a lean back desperation save. And... Ducks with some quick one-timers uh, by the face-off, on top of the face-off circle, and you know, some just some quick shots. I haven't seen that a lot this game, and uh, definitely surprised the Generals there, and surprised not one of those shots went in, so good job on the Duck, uh, Generals D. Back to the blue line, Warren Berg. Nice move to retain possession. Then he couldn't find, couldn't feed it to Nathan Lutz in the middle of the ice. Berg again, 11:46. There's the Ducks again. Shot and a save again. Roysom. Yeah, Roysom. By that man, a stake. <laughs> three feet. Sorry, maybe three to three feet on. Uh, top of his goal crease out there. Really aggressive on the save. He had his D covering the slot and so just took away the angle from, from Chamberlain. Back underway again. Our clock is strayed a little from reality again. I'll reset it at the next whistle. Officially 11.24 left in period number two. How to say, did not expect that we would be almost halfway through this game and looking at a 1 0 score, but Roysom and Parks have been outstanding. That's been more of a goalie show tonight. Armstrong with the hit. Falling back in a fadeaway slap shot from Nathan Lutz. Somehow manages to hit the top of the glass, not the netting, and stay alive. Kept in, and oh, a sloppy pass there. And Armstrong knew it, given away. Generals take themselves offside, have to get back on and regroup. Armstrong with a nice hit. Chamberlain separating. Nathan Lutz with a shot and a save from Roysom. Lutz again behind the net, trying to keep it alive. And now penalty coming up. Did you see the call there? Looks like for slashing, gonna go on the Generals, number 24, Devin Dunn. Might be a second penalty of the game. Yeah, two minutes for slashing is the call. So Ducks get their first power play at the second period. Third of the game, I believe. And they've had, they've had their chances this second period. So let's see if they can maybe capitalize 
uh, on the game. It looks like we got a goaltending change for the Ducks. Did we get Harry in there? Yeah, it looks like Jackson uh, Harry in for the Ducks. So plan seems to have been to play uh, one half yep. of the game for each goalie. Jackson will get 15 seconds more than Grayson. <laughs> Yeah, what a great first half for Parks, like what we saw from him so far in the game. Oh, one-timer there, hit a, uh, a leg, and it was not the goalies. Warren Berg now moving in. He takes a shot off the top of the glass again. Another rebound shot somehow goes wide. A buck 26 left on the Duck power play, and they've already gotten a couple of shots on it. Horn line shot, hits some sticks in, goes wide into the corner, kept alive from the Ducks, trying to get it to Rendell. Wide back for Horn line, quick pass to Berg. Berg, one timer! Wow. That was a nice save. Off the, oh, oh, almost got the false goal call there and hit the side netting. Yeah, Royston didn't even know where that last shot came from, hit him, hit him up high. Great save. Loose in front still, and the shot goes wide. 9.08 left in the second period. 48 seconds left on the man advantage. Warren Berg for the Ducks. They'll switch places with Rendell. Gives it to Rendell, and then he gets it to the blue line, and Horn line couldn't keep it in. Again, a little sloppy off of Rendell's stick. Yeah, the, that was the first time Generals caught a break with a no clear. And Armstrong just couldn't quite control it there. A couple of sloppy moments for the Ducks, the latter half of this power play after a very good first minute. Now they get back in a little bit of shape again. Armstrong sends it into the corner. The Ducks are changing. Garrity now for Oregon. Armstrong. Armstrong pickpocketed. The penalty is over. Back to even strength. Here come the Generals across the blue line. Kadeh, but he lost the puck. Choppy ice for both teams in this second period. Garrity. Checked through the zone, lost the puck. Jens the other way. Kode coming down the middle. Had Leach as well. Now pushing him forward for the Ducks. Austin Charnholm, but it's offside. Yeah, Ducks power play first half looked really good. Then, like you said, second half a little bit sloppy there with some miscues and uh, mishandling of the puck at the blue line. But really good uh, chances on that first half, though. Seven forty-one left on both clocks as we move through this second period. As soon as I say that, I start mine half a second late, and somehow still end up ahead of the arena clock. It's game one for us. It's game one for everybody in the scorers booth, and it's game one for everybody on the ice. Here come the Generals, a shot, saved from Howry, little bit of a rebound there, but he gobbled it up. Yeah, basically a partial breakaway for the Gens was uh, the player kind of broke free from from the Oregon D-man, I believe that was uh, Yola there playing D, and that's Jackson's first save of the game, kind of a, kind of a big test for him right, out, right off the bat. Harry's got a lot to prove this year. He's a great goalie, but three great goalies on this team, and it's going to be uh, it's going to be a battle for ice time. I yeah, played a lot forward last year for the Ducks as they had a hard time filling out the roster, but uh, scored the Ducks' first goal of the year last year, if I'm not mistaken, think, against the Generals. I believe so. Mm -hmm. And it took us about a half of a period to realize that it had been Howry. Oh yeah, I think uh, he didn't have a name on the back of his jersey. We had no idea who it was. We're much better prepared this year with a full lineup. 
And that will squirt all the way out to the blue line, but kept alive. And then sloppy pass poked away by the Generals. That's an awkward collision into the boards. Good to see everybody get up okay. I yeah, never want to dive head first in the board. Uh, good thing everyone's good there. Chamberlain behind the net. Trying to find Lutz where the Ducks. Generals take it away in the process. They get a break and a shot behind the net now. Good job defensively by the Ducks. Towards Nathan Lutz. Lutz pokes at it, keeps it alive. Derek Armstrong will dump it in. Everyone on side, so everyone goes to chase. Now it caroms all the way back, and Austin Pultz will collect it. Armstrong, he threw it towards goal. It's deflected out of play by Roysom with 6.06 .06 officially left in period number two. Yeah, I get a rebound control by Roysom just deflecting that out of play. Straight to a whistle. Six oh two left now. Oh, great and, read. Yeah, you gotta anticipate sometimes make your own luck and great example of that for the Ducks there. It's loose in front and just nobody in the slot to pounce on that one. Austin Poltz found Schultz. Schultz will slap it in. Royce of, uh oh, oh, and falling down. It was a freebie, but he fell. Wow. Try to go for the wraparound. Because I believe that was. Let's see. I believe that might have been Pulse down there. Or wait, number 14. Oh, that was uh, number 14 for the Ducks. Charles Gearing with the wraparound. And Royce um, there. Diving down, like you said, good thing for Roysom and the generals that he fell on the wraparound because he uh, had a lot, not that, a lot of net there to shoot at. Chuck Gearing out of Chicago. Ducks always seem to have one or two from the Windy City. Kyle, or you know him as Todd Letterer, Jake Yale, Adam Sussman, a lot of Chicago area greats come through this program. Horn line, knocked off the puck, but he'll get right back to it. Back to Rendell, towards Horn line again. Couldn't quite control it in the slot. Yeah, trying to find Fortney there, off that slot pass. Ryan Freitag, easy to recognize for now in that white helmet. Much like Harrison Cass last year in the white helmet. Yep. And here is Freitag. Freitag's gonna take a shot. It goes wide, but controlled by Hornline. Freitag collects it again. He's got some reach. He's a long defenseman. Yeah, a lot of guys on the, this team, not only on the defense, but uh, as that puck goes out of play on the offense too. I noticed uh, Garrity number 91 has a long reach as well for forward and a lot of taller D-men out there with the, the long stick. I didn't even notice that Nick Power 6'3", one of the taller guys on the team. Anyone above 5'9 is pretty tall <laughs> yeah. to me. <laughs> Vertically challenged individual. <laughs> Chasing it there is Garrity. Garrity and Charnholm. Rebound from Garrity's shot and traffic in front of Roysom. Ducks are not making life easy for him. He's a stud between the pipes for the Generals. Yeah, if he plays like this for the whole year, Generals got a really good goaltender on their hands and Generals D not helping him out too much. More often than not, this period of uh, Ducks players has been able to walk in front and 
get a backhand or a forehand off right in front of the crease. Big hit there. Knocks a Generals player off the puck. Gets some possession for the Ducks. Good job to keep it alive. Shot through and good save again. Arbolovsky for the Generals. Stops, goes the other way. Still Arbolovsky with the puck. Still Arbolovsky. Now he lost it. Generals keep it alive, but they have to go back into the neutral zone to reset. Across the blue line is Nicholas Short. And that's a bit of a misnomer. He's uh, not small. Deflected and something to do for Jackson Howery. Just taps it behind himself. He just had the one uh, kind of big save early on and hasn't seen much action since. Icing waved off, so Nathan Lutz will pressure there. Lost his balance, though, after he delivered the hit and couldn't take the puck. Generals there, and that looked like an awkward incident. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be number 37 for the Ducks. Oula. Interference is what they'll call it for you, Loa, we think. <laughs> we will uh, we'll get the names from the boys. So this is kind of a, could be a change of momentum for for the uh, for the Gens because they've had to spend almost this whole period in their own zone. And we'll see if they can't generate any offense out of it. They've had a lot of time in their own zone on the power play tonight, to be <laughs> fair. But it should be a little easier for them at five on four. And, you know, we, we shouldn't be dis so dismissive of the Generals. I mean, this is only a one nothing game, and here's a power play chance for the Generals as the shot goes wide. Yeah, their goaltenders really kept them in this game. Here's Kaday. Kaday with a shot into the netting behind the goal. We had somebody predicting a Kaday goal in the second period. He has looked for the Generals to score. If he had to pick three, he'd probably pick Bauman, Kaday, and Arbolovsky as the most likely to score for the Gens. In front, oh, nearly that one trickled through the slot and a little bit fancy stick handling from the Gens. If they were a little more straightforward, they might have been able to find that. That's caromed around the whole length of the ice. Rysom behind the net, and look out. Right home, horn line's right there. Backhander, still loose, still it's loose. Trying to get his uh, pad down on it was Roysem and finally it's underneath and then it's whistled. Yeah, good position by Roysem just down there in the butterfly and basically looked like Hornline was there all alone once again trying to put home his own rebound. And here comes some more pressure from the Ducks on their own PK. Yeah, Rendell and Hornline pretty, pretty good duo out there for the PK can add a little bit of offense out there. Buck 25 left in the second period. Still just a one nothing game. And cleared there. And another chance for Hornline shorthanded. What a move! And then Rendell couldn't quite control it. And then thrown back and uh-oh! One-on-one -on -one opportunity on Howie, they score! Wow. That was a super nice move by Koday. In all alone off the stretch pass. And almost like a Datsuki and Deke there, he kind of did pull on the pull drag and got it just above the pad on Jackson Howery. Uh, tie up the game at one apiece. On count will count as a power play goal for the Generals. and. Pretty tough. That's uh, one of the few shots Jackson has seen this game, and 
Yeah, I mean, Pretty Jackson's left out to dry there. <laughs> There's, you know, that's, you love that pressure. It's really fun to watch that PK pressure, but sometimes you're going to be made to pay when you do that. Yeah, finally cost the Ducks after getting a lot of good chances on their own PK, but you got to, you know, make sure you're back on D. That was a really good break, <laughs> breakaway goal. Wrapping around behind the net, still loose, and it's Garrity. Shot wide again, loose, bouncing around, and quick whistle. 23 yeah. seconds left officially. Royce, I'm just having one of those games where the puck just seems like it's sticking to him, uh, bouncing off of the back wall and back in front and having good position out there just to have the puck stick to him. Back underway, oh, and they score again! Quick response from the Ducks, and it's 2-1. That's what you need going into the locker room. Yeah, a nice quick wrister by Jack Garrity. He's been kind of buzzing this second period. Uh, a few shots early on, and it was just a quick little wrist shot kind of by the right face-off dot and beat Roysom five hole. And I think that was, that's what it was gonna take to beat Roysom again this period in this game just a quick wrister kind of from a bad angle so yeah good on the duck 17 seconds left a 2-1 lead gonna go into the first unless something big happens here again well here's Garrity again and now another shot and oh there was, there was a half an inch of shot of, of cage there and another whistle with three seconds left yeah you're right there was a little bit of room on that short side so big, big kind of momentum swing for the Ducks going in to the locker room. Just a big response to that goal. Yeah. And, you know, that's what you want to see. It's important in these games to kind of establish your identity as a team and how you respond to adversity is a big part of that. That will do it for the second period of play. Two to one in favor of the Ducks. Your score after 40 minutes. We will be back with you to recap the intermission, uh, recap that period a little bit, but we're gonna take a quick break before we get there. So get a drink, get some food, just don't go too far.
again, like we've been kind of saying, no practice, no training camp so far for this team. So that they'll just get better with chemistry as they the more they play. But quick answer back uh, from Jared at the end of that period to beat um, Royce through the five hole. So kind of made it a different game coming in here into the third period. So we'll see if things maybe start to open up a little bit. Maybe one team can capitalize on some mistakes from the other. And we'll see what happens. I mean, to, uh, that, that shot by Garrett, he kind of shot from a bad angle. And we kind of saw the generals doing that for the most part in the first and second period, just kind of shooting from every kind of angle. And we'll see how Jackson, how he kind of stands up. I know he kind of got left out the dry on that breakaway, and we'll see how he responds in the third. But just looking to improve and kind of work out some of the kinks for this Ducks team. So two to one the score. 20 minutes left. It's been a much lower scoring game than we expected. Well, that can all change in a period. But when, how many times have we seen that? <laughs> well, how many goals was it? Eight goals in the third period of the I-5 Cup last year? Yeah, that was... Four for each team is one of the most wild 20 minutes of hockey I have ever seen. And, and not, not to mention a 30-minute... Over in 30-minute <laughs> glass break delay, and then over in six seconds in overtime, and the I-5 Cup was lost. <laughs> it's, think, it's a brutal uh, sport, man. I think that had to be the quickest... Uh, call by you. You just said, and it's over. <laughs> yeah, there's um, I make I'll do my best, especially when it's a Generals game, to give shout outs to the Gens players when when deserved, but especially when conference play starts, I make no illusions about <laughs> being a neutral broadcaster. I'm wearing Oregon Ducks gear. This is on an Oregon Ducks channel. Um, wasn't 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 what I wanted to call that <laughs> night, but well, hey, that, 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 that's why I'm here, kind of balance it out a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. Calm me down every once in a while. <laughs> He's got a cattle prod, which you can't see at home. <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll see uh, some more offense this period. We'll see how well Roy some kind of stands tall. He's had quite the game so far for him. Very strong, and, and maybe this is probably when... Uh, Teams with a big bench and a small bench kind of come into play. The Ducks having the bigger bench than the Gens, so we'll see how well their depth proves in the third period. New, new Ducks jerseys, as I understand, and they're not new, new. They're just new for the players, and unless there's something they haven't told me, and why would you ever switch with such a great jersey? But Unless it's I, better, which is hard to do. I, hard to fathom. I, I would expect that they'll be here by the Eastern Washington series when they go on the road, but... Um, when you've got a, a small company like this great, you know, great provider, great apparel sponsor, uh, Rebirth, but small company, small club, you never know how shipping's going to work. But hopefully we're back to normal numbers the next time we do our broadcast uh, when the I-5 Cup starts. Underway in the third period, 20 minutes of hockey left, and no immediate, had to wait for a second, no immediate penalties this time around. Fortney across the blue line. Tried to slide it back for Rendell. Lost it, but Warren Berg's going to go back to get it. Berg's got an A on his chest. I don't know if captains have officially been assigned this year. Haven't actually seen who's got the C. There might not be a C on a jersey yet. After Trevor Shot retired and... Now Coach Shot. Now Coach Shot. You gotta get a number 95 jersey in the rafters. If anyone deserves a retired jersey at this level, it is Trevor Shot. Don't think that the Ducks officially have any retired numbers. A little tough to do if it's a number like nine. Nick Skibera did probably almost enough to earn it, but tough to retire nine, but 95 you could probably get away with retiring, and Trevor certainly deserve it. Here's Harrison Cass, and 
couldn't quite control it there, trying to slide it across. Nineteen minutes flat left in this one, two to one the score. underway. Bauman with the Generals behind the net. Now Arbolovsky. Ooh, stood up by Schultz at the blue line. Gonna be a penalty though. Yeah, I caught him up interference. high. This yeah. ref loves calling interference, doesn't he? Definitely called on that one because I, <clears throat> I think the Gens player got rid of it at the last second and you know they just called interference because he didn't have the puck but uh kind of a split second call so that's sorry Poltz with the hit and the penalty so he sits in the box so duck shorthanded here last time Jens were on the power play was a breakaway goal so maybe you might see something a little bit more conservative or aggressive for this Ducks PK so those words in that order, <laughs> giving up a power, a breakaway goal on the power on play. On the power play, <laughs> you just gave any coach that's watching this game a headache. But don't forget, right before that, the Ducks almost scored shorthanded like three times in a matter of 40 seconds. So we'll see what happens this time around. Generals with a shot, they score. Ripped right through by Dakota Hen, and it's 2-2. And I was barring in right off the face-off dot. Generals regained the puck, and Dakota Hen had time and space, and pretty easy to do on the power play, get a lot of space out there, and kind of ripped right on the top of the slot there, and went barring in on top of Jackson's glove hand. So back and forth. Got a 2-2 game in the third period. Generals played Western Washington real tight, but the games were much more high scoring as the Ducks have taken themselves offside. 18-13 left, second, third period. Nice job there, taken away by Poltz. Behind the net, Poltz still trying to keep it, still kept for the Ducks. Loose in front there in the slide, but moved out by the Generals. Right though to Warren Bird. Garrity dropped back for Cass. Cass fires a shot, save, and gobbled up by Roysom. Seventy-eight of you watching now, and we are thankful for each and every one of you. Assume we probably got quite a big generals contingent watching. Yeah, quite a lot of fans in the stands today. A lot of wearing shorts. Pretty warm. There's a shot there by Schultz. Pretty warm today in Eugene, and uh, you can kind of feel it in the rink too. Uh, Isaac taking off <laughs> some of the layers. Uh, a little warm to soft the game, kind of cooling off a bit now. And not like we're used to. I remember last year, a lot of really cold games in yeah, here. Yeah, this is a cold rink typically. And um, for those that maybe don't go to too many rinks, you might be chuckling a cold rink. But they do tend to have, or some of them do tend to be colder than others. Where we go in, in Tahoe is a frigid rink. Up in Seattle, a little bit more comfortable. Yeah. 
17-23 left third period tie game. Chamberlain with the face off for the Ducks taken by Bauman for the Generals. Ducks trying to keep it in, it's Poltz there. Chamberlain digging at it too. Now it squirts behind, but Bauman's gonna go get it for the general. 17 17-07 rather, left in the third. Across the blue line, Arbolovsky's shot goes into the netting. Yeah, Ducks gonna wanna try to find the get back in their groove and kind of sustain some offensive pressure. Kind of big goal for the Gens right off the bat of the second period to tie up the game. And so it's anyone's game from here on out. Bouncing puck and played with the high stick, I think. It'll yeah, faceoff will come outside. Sixteen fifty-two officially left. We'll hold off on starting our clock. Try and get it to match. And little sloppy pass in front of Kurt Fortney. Couldn't control it. Gives the Generals a chance to take possession in their own zone and now try to move out through the neutral zone. It's the referee there. Now Rendell for the Ducks. Rendell throws on the brakes, throws on the brakes again, and couldn't find Fortney, or maybe Fortney couldn't find the puck. In the neutral zone, now back to the own zone of the Ducks. Wanting it, asking for it hard was Rendell. Got it and then couldn't get a shot or a pass off. But uh, Hornline goes to get it. Garrity didn't get a good grip on that shot. And now the Generals with the chance. Into the attacking zone, the shot deflected wide by Howie. Here's Hornline to Rendell. Hornline and Rendell, two on one. Good D from the general. Excuse me, that was Garrity, not Rendell. Big high bounce. Backhanded again towards Royceman. He will cover it up with 15-14 left in period three. Yeah, Garrity and Hornline. Little one-two action coming down the side. And Garrity's had some good chances this game. Just got to keep plugging away for the Ducks. There's another shot and a long rebound. Garrity couldn't control it. Had an opportunity. Still with possession of the Ducks and Garrity blew a wheel. Still battling for it. His Garrity, great job. In front, couldn't get a deflection home there, but great idea from the Ducks. Opportunity now, trying to find Armstrong. That was Austin Scharnholm. Nice job from Power there. Hipped into the slot, no one there initially, and it came out uh, all the way closer to the point and then was thrown on goal from the Ducks, 14-18 left. Yeah, good um, good find from Armstrong to Power to get up on the point. Power had some good good shots earlier in the game. And, you know, he's a guy that could have a big shot from the point, so get on the forward trying to feed it up top. Would you call it a powerful shot? <laughs> <laughs> I think I set you up for that one. I think he did a little bit. I think we're going to have some fun with these names this year. <laughs> it should be fun. It's a fun game, Brent. 
having to chase this one down, but getting to it in time was Austin Fultz. Paid the price for it. Ducks get to break out. Chamberlain behind the net. All the way to the point, Armstrong. A lot of reach and a lot of strength. That's a boarding call. That's a boarding any day. So I'll go on 24 on the Gens. Devin Dunn, I think his third penalty of the game. Mr. Dunn goes to his office. <laughs> My principal is Mr. Dunn. <laughs> um, but yeah, so big kind of power play here. Look for the Ducks to take back the lead at 1350 left in the third. And it looks like Ducks are gonna send out their number one power play unit that we've seen so far in this game. It's basically just their first line forward group with Cass and Berg on running the point. And they get the face off win, a shot wide. Into the netting, stop the clock. 13.42 left officially. Back underway, a buck 50 left on the power play. Horn line. Still horn line and some great speed with the puck and able to keep control. Here's Warren Berg. Back to Cass, taking their time. What you want to see from a power play is patience. Berg to Cass. To the middle, Rendell couldn't get a clean shot off. Had some cage to shoot at. Back from Cass to Berg again. Berg moves and he shoots wide. Comes back to Cass. Cass keeps it alive through Rendell. Rendell will switch places at the point. Back to Berg. Now, uh, Horn line. Back Berg. To the middle. Towards Cass. He'll keep it alive. 48 seconds left on the man advantage. Harrison Cass, the law student. And kept it in. Great reach from Berg there and great skilled control. But now an opportunity shorthanded maybe for the generals. Good job to get back. Great job by Kurt Fortney. Still 25 seconds left on the power play. Here's Connor Rendell. Rendell, one of the biggest offensive threats for the Ducks. Back to Garrity. Garrity will try to go behind the net. Went for the wraparound, wasn't there. Still, it's Garrity's puck. Back up top. Berg. Charnholm. Charnholm fires a shot blocked before it got anywhere. Great job diving, slapping at the puck from Charnholm to keep it alive. We are back to five-a-side hockey. Yeah, we got Jared down there with Armstrong fighting for the puck in the corner. And Jared pass in front. And now cleared, trying to jump up to get it was Pulse, but couldn't and then lost an edge. Howery's gonna quickly play and intercepted by Arbolovsky. Arbolovsky back toward the center and loose. Still nearly, uh, indeed actually set up a shot for Bailiff for the Generals. 11.05 left in a tie game in the third period. Across the blue line, it was Bauman. Chance for the Ducks. Nathan Lutz, we haven't called his name too much. There's an opportunity and oh, they just couldn't get the shot. Luke Chamberlain had a goal on his stick there. Now it's Nathan Lutz again. Lutz with a shot. Save, but it's loose. Royce is continuing to just stand on his head for the Generals. Poke back and taken away again. Chamberlain. Back to Lutz. Ready. 
Wrap it around towards Berg to keep it in the zone. Berg then knocked uh, Jacob Rhodes off the puck. Trying to get it to Rendell, kept barely alive by the Ducks. Nathan Lutz behind the net. Nathan Lutz drops it for Rendell. Back towards Lutz. Off the, uh, not sure what that hit, but saved anyway by Royson. And then a second one. Long pressure from the Ducks here. Great attack. Sustained offense. Rendell to Power. Behind the net for Lutz, back up top to Nick Power. He rips another one, loose, rebounded there, still loose, and Lutz looks behind him, finds the puck, but can't chop it back up to Power at the point. Chamberlain with a good hit. Generals just want to get a change. They're pretty exhausted. Yeah, Jens are exhausted, so are the Ducks. There's a nice pass to find Rendell. He waited, though, didn't shoot. The angle closed on him a little too quickly. Here, trying to get through was Brock Friesen. Huck, though, remains in the general zone. Horn line there. Couldn't find it for a shot. Friesen again. Kept in the zone again by the Ducks. That shot high and wide. 8.23 left in the third period of a 2-2 tie. Yeah, Ducks with a ton of pressure here in the third. Penalty coming up against the Generals. Yeah, that's, what's, that, that's usually what happens when you're stuck in your own zone for so long and Ducks just trying to play keep away and burn some clock off with the ex, uh, extra man. And looks like it'll be two minutes for high sticking on Jen's player number 16. Brock Friesen will take a seat. So another huge moment of the game coming just past the halfway point for the Ducks. And their top unit was out there for a while at even strength. So it looks like they're going to maybe throw out their second power play unit, but with their first line D with Schultz and Pulse running the back end. And then G3, uh, Charnholm, and Armstrong running the forward group. Yeah, this is a huge moment for the Ducks to convert and really run up the score. I mean, sorry, uh, take the lead, I mean. Holtz to Garrity. Garrity drops it back, and they go back to Pultz again. Now Hornline with the shot. Schultz there. And shorthanded. Oh, the Generals up the ice. Garrity gets to it, but can't control it. Jens get another chance to dump it in, and they will slide and retreat a little bit back toward their defensive zone. Give the Ducks power play a chance to get his own entry and set up. Nice move from Garrity. Then he took a shot. It was deflected by something high into the netting. 7.09 left in the third period. Yeah, and a minute 11 left in the power play. So, had a few opportunities, but not anything too dangerous for the Ducks with their second unit. So they throw back on their first unit with Hornline, Fortney, and Rendell. Back around, great opportunity for Cass, but the save made from Roysom again. Yeah, Ducks just buzzing so far in this third. 7.02 left. And they really want to try to take the lead here. Back up top. Good passing. Berg back to Cass. Cass is given some time to think about it. Slides it across. Now back in front. Loose deflected. And... Ends up inside the equipment of Roysom once again. Yeah, Roysom had not only a general's D-man, but Fortney right there in front, able to just keep his position good and make the save with a kind of a C9 shot. He's had quite a few of those today where 
few guys in front and oh a centering pass just nearly missed. for Rendell. Cass back to Berg. Berg back to the slot. The shot off the post and no one set up for the rebound. Berg though controls for the Ducks. Rendell shot wide. Fortney there. Rendell, Fortney. And now Hornline again. We are almost at 100 viewers right now. Tell your friends, help us get there. Great third period conclusion. Berg. Back to Hornline. Back across for Cass. Deflected high into the netting. Yeah, that one duck shot right off the inside of the post. Great chance for them. A uh, few of them on that power play. Some great zone time as well. And it's kind of just been a, almost like an extended power play because the Ducks at even strength have just been had so much zone time here in the third. But you've seen when the D for the Ducks try to pinch, the general try to turn it back the other way. So got to be wary of that and to see if the Gens try to turn it up in the zone. In the net of Jackson Howry. Uh, Pultz going for it. And sent up Bears. A couple of crisper passes. Now Chamberlain back toward Lutz. Lutz couldn't control it though. Taken right back though by Chamberlain. He fires a shot. Bouncing puck. Cleared away by the Generals. Schultz rips one well wide. Pultz is going to get there now. Armstrong behind the net. Armstrong trying to center. Ducks couldn't get the stick on it. Here come the Generals now. Good hit. They're going to call a penalty on that. Yeah, looks like tripping. Schultz went in for the stick. Stick, and I think his leg and stick caught him right there on the red line. So after all that zone time for the Ducks, it's going to result going the other way and with the tripping call on Schultz. So now this is kind of a break for the Gens. They're able to kind of set up and you know see what their power play can do here with just about five minutes left in the third. Yeah, five oh, minutes exactly left now. Big power play opportunity for the Gens. The shot through. Went they had nearly. a gaping yeah, there net. was a great opportunity for the Gens if they could get a stick down on that one. Power tries to clear. Doesn't get past the blue line. Arbolovsky with the shot that goes wide. He had a guy on the far side. 4.30 officially left. And now here comes Nick Power. Power to Cass across the blue line. Just on side. Back to Power. And he's just going to... Have this one carry him around the corner. Horn line there, but no one to help. Chopping at it was Charnholm. It's a chance for Horn line trying to slide it across there. Charnholm again gets a stick to that. 48 seconds left on the power play for the Generals. Horn line back to uh, Poltz there. 30 seconds left on the Schultz minor. This one will go back for Rendell. Rendell with Poltz. And he will wait and he will clear. 19 seconds left on the man advantage. Generals moving through, trying to get a shot, and goes into the corner. Armstrong there, three seconds left, 2-1, and we're back to even strength hockey. Not a lot of regulation left, three minutes. Generals had a kind of, ooh. Oh, it's a big hit by Armstrong. And he's gonna do that, folks. He's a large man, and we're gonna get a whistle here. I think they're going to call a little injury timeout. 
against number 11 for the Gens, Jacob Cote. Oh, sorry, no, 23. My mistake, that's Alex Clark. Yeah, yeah, I think he had his head down and did not see that one coming and Armstrong got him pretty good. Looks like they're gonna take him out. Oh, sorry, that's not even 23, that's, he's helping. Well, I can try to get a good number when I see it coming off the side here. Yeah, I think it was Kode that took the hit. Oh no, Kode's over there on the bench. Let's see. 20. 24 is that? Devin Dunn. No, Leach. Leach. Almost named off their whole roster. Just trying to find a number. <laughs> but hopefully he's okay going off the locker room. Yeah, that was a huge hit by Armstrong. I mean, Armstrong's a big dude. That was right in his train tracks. And now the shot in the save. We are over 100 viewers. I'm not sure that has ever happened in the history of our broadcast. So for all the Jens fans and all the Duck fans joining us tonight, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. And again, everyone who donated to that GoFundMe, all the Duck sponsors, everyone who helps make this program run. Cannot thank you all enough. Yeah, also a big shout out to Sam Rosenberg for uh, and Trevor Shaw for being so uh, good to me for interviewing. Uh, doing a little mini doc and that's on the website too. Warrenberg's pass a little bit sloppy, but they go back to get it. And trying to go through everybody there was Chamberlain. Chamberlain will go to the corner again. Cass with a shot, rebound is there. Luz, they score! With a minute 52 left, the Ducks take a 3-2 lead. Yeah, what a play by Cass. Found some time in the slot, just put it on net. And Lutz with a few jabs at it. And Was it Lutz who had it? Yeah, Lutz had the goal with the assist from, from Cass. I don't know about the secondary assist, but Royston couldn't control that rebound. And yeah, like you said, minute 52, clutch goal for, for Lutz. He you know, has a nose for the net as we've seen the past few years and big goal for the Ducks to take the lead and just capitalize on a big, uh, short little rebound and put it home. So, 140 officially left. Once we get another whistle, I will match my clock to the game clock. Who's there, dangerous. In front, don't count the gens out yet. Shot blocked, and that's a sacrifice there. Yeah, that's a big block. Nice block by Harrison Cass. They'll feel that one tomorrow, but it's gonna feel good if the Ducks can hold on to this. Still though, puck possession and pressure from the Generals. Inside now of one minute left officially. Rebound, now oh, they score! Great response from the Generals, and it's 3-3. Yeah, that was a cross-ice pass. I believe that's number, excuse me, number eight, Jacob Rhodes, with the goal out on the far side. And yeah, when you get a goalie moving from left to right or right to left, uh, you're going to leave a lot of cage open. So big goal for the Gens, tied up at one minute and one second left in the third at three. And like we've seen this game, the whole game back and forth between each team, like one team scores, other team responds. It's a huge game tying goal for the Gens and we'll see who wants to take it with a minute left. And Duck's gonna send out their first and first offensive and defensive pairings out there to try to maybe get some more scoring opportunities going out late. Face off again will be controlled by the Ducks. Shot there from Rendell goes wide. 
50 seconds left in regulation. Great game. Battle for Eugene, game one between the Ducks and the Generals. Game two tomorrow, Alex Stimson will have the call for you on the Eugene Generals Hockey Network. A shot there, glove save, Howry. Yeah, good save by Howry after giving up the goal. Nice glove save on Clark. So yeah, this is big crunch time for both teams. Exactly 30 seconds left. And 3-3 tie. Great game so far, back and forth. Each team able to kind of respond to each other's blow. Back underway again. Inside of 30 seconds, our clock is a little off. Actually 22 seconds officially left now. Battling in the corner. Fortney throws that around. Moving through though. Ducks are gonna get a chance. No, they won't. One line. Couldn't get the shot off. Five seconds left. Puck stuck behind the net. Three, two, one, and that will do it for regulation. Back and forth game. It's been a real entertaining one to watch. And we're not done just yet. I'm actually not sure. I'm going to have to find out what we're going to do to break this tie here. Yeah, it looks give like... Me uh, just, uh, give me just one moment. Yeah, as Isaac does that, it uh, looks like the ref's talking it over the scorekeeper. And yeah, it looks like both teams going back to their benches, kind of deciding what they're going to do for OT. So... Nobody has any clue. Hopefully the refs know how we're going to break this tie. If you were to guess, what would you say that you want to see? I want to see, I would, what I would want to see is three on three. Yeah. I would want to see three on three and, and then if we're, we need it after that, a shootout. As long as it's th if three on three is the pack eight rule, I want to see three on, whatever the pack eight rule is, is what I want to see. I think the ref's on the, he just called someone on the phone. Maybe just to confer with someone. And so we'll see. So they got five minutes up on the clock. So either going to be three on three or four on four. My guess, three on three. And then maybe a shootout or we'll end it in a tie. But... Yeah, a great game so far. First game of the season for the Ducks. You know, still working out the Kings, but we saw some good things out there. I like what I see from the new guys on the team. Looking very sharp. So looks like Ducks got three skaters out there. Sorry, no, four. So it looks like it'll be four on four for five minutes. Then most likely a shootout. So even though it's not three on three, four on four does, you know, create a lot of ice out there. And both teams are banging the boards. They're hyped for this, and we'll see who's going to take it. Time. Four on four we go. Here's power. Looks like we got Rendell and Gertry out there. And Berg and Power, the defensive pairing. In the net, Rendell couldn't control. Power. Back to Rendell. Lost the puck. Opportunity if the Gens go quick the other way. Three on two. Shot. Oh, oh, just missed. It hit 88% of Jackson Howery's glove. And then it trickled 
wide and nearly found the cage. Rendell trying to get around his man and get the shot off, couldn't do it. Arbolovsky for the Generals now. Flips it up to Clark. Clark with a shot over the cage. Power behind the net. 3.45 left officially in overtime. Here's Hornline. Doesn't like his options. He'll go back to the neutral zone. Flips it back for Harrison Cass. Cass tries to get it across to Hornline. Had a little trouble controlling it. Eventually did. Now here's Cass. Cass in the corner. Behind the net towards Hornline. Can they poke it to Schultz? They do. Schultz back towards Hornline, but he's knocked down. General's controlling the puck now. Cross ice pass. They get it across the blue line. Poked away and still bouncing in front. Opportunity for the Generals. If they shoot, they can. They do get the shot. Harry with the save, wrapping around. And good job there. Great job from Schultz helping out Jackson Howry. Harrison Cass now. 2.48 left officially. Yeah, there was room on that wraparound, and Schultz was there to make a big yeah, Schultz big save for his goalie. Absolutely save the game for the Ducks. Here's Hornline there. Hornline's done a lot of skate in this game. Back to Berg. Berg with a shot! Just high of the cage. Still behind the net. Hornline again. Turns, fire, shoots, save. No, uh, yeah, knocked away. Berg again on the intercept. Taken down, no call. Yeah, going to take a lot more than that to get a call on OT. Across. Moving its power. Tried to make a pass. Fortney there. The Jens will flip that one up. Arbolovsky is on the side, but Howry is on the puck. Yeah, just kind of a hard call to make when the puck's up in the air. A little alley -oop pass to the Jens player. That was number 18, Cody Arbolovsky. But man, a back and forth, stressful time for both teams. It's got Rendell and Dirtry back out there for the Ducks. Pulse to Schultz. Nice job there. And Schultz creates some space. Garrity. Garrity turns and fires, and Royce makes the save. Yeah, he's a slippery player. He's done that a lot this game. He's really quick on his feet at the long reach. And yeah, a lot of plays like that this game. Late starting the clock again. Sorry about that. 119 officially left. Puck is free now. There is Cote. Forward to Rhodes. Rhodes across the blue line. Stick checked by Pulse. Now just barely kept in by the Generals. Looking to get a shot here. Under a minute left. Deflected, loose in front, still loose, poked away. Another shot fired by the Generals, didn't get through to Howry. 45 seconds left officially. Bolt plays it off the boards, trying to find Rendell and does. Rendell moving in, he didn't get the shot off. Took a little too long too on the long. back end. Tried to make it too pretty. Now here come the Generals the other way. How are we out to try to contest? Shot goes high above the cage. 20 seconds left officially. Back in the slot for the uh, Generals. Backhanded again, taken away by the Ducks. And penalty behind the play. Wow, 10 seconds left. They're gonna call a tripping call back on the Ducks' own blue line on Pult. 
So Hugh, biggest play of the game coming up for the Ducks. So it looks like it's gonna, yeah, it's gonna be a four on three, not a five on four. So four on three and biggest play of the game right here. Generals get the face-off win. Looking for a shot, oh, they nearly had a chance at the buzzer beater instead. We are going to, I would assume, maybe yeah, it looks like a shootout. a shootout or maybe more OT. Yeah, just official announcement for a shootout. So nice little last second clear for the Ducks to able to save off any last, make it, last second OT. Uh, goal by the Gens and not too sure when's the last time you saw a duck shootout it's been a couple years right I am not sure that I have ever actually or seen ever? one wow. I'm not. trying to remember yeah I, I definitely have it in my time here so <laughs> so Looks like the Gens are gonna come out with Dakota Hen. D-man for the Gens. So the Gens will be going from right to left, Ducks from left to right. Well, it's either a five or a three-man shootout. Either way, it starts with Hen. Hen moving in on Howry and he scores. Yeah, Havri bit on the fake shot, went to the backhand and roofed it. Nice little stop in front. Great, great hands by the Dean. I didn't know uh, he had that type of hands. Pretty good by the Jens there. So Harrison Cass will shoot first for the Ducks. Here comes Cass across the blue line. Now at the circles. Not much of a move and the shot is saved. Yeah, looks like Cass tried to open him up with the kind of the fake shot, slide in in five hole, but like we said all game, Roysom just pretty solid in his positioning and play. Looks like we're gonna have Jared Cote Big goal on a breakaway for him earlier in the game. We'll see how he does here. Okay, see if it was on Howry that he scored earlier. Here's Cody again. He scores again. Now that time, instead of no deeks applied, it just came down and shot blocker side up high. So this might be Rendell, if he, we don't know if it's a three or a five man shootout, so we'll see. Here comes Rendell across the blue line, into the slot. Shot save made by Roysom. Yeah, looks like it's gonna be a five. Yeah, best of five. Some, <laughs> some gens were about to come onto the ice, but ref says it's gonna be best of five, so. Jackson's gotta stop this here to move, yeah, keep going. Yeah, still a critical st stop for how are we to make. It's Arbolovsky. Slowly skating in is Arbolovsky. Waits. Yeah. And Howry makes the save. Tried to do the Forsberg, but came in a little bit too slow and I missed the net. Trying to get a little too fancy here, but here comes for the Ducks, Jared Tree. You know, we've seen him have some good hands in the game. Let's see if he pulls out some deeks for this shot. Here he comes. Moving in, Ducks need the goal. They don't get it. Oh, for three in the shootout of the Ducks. Yeah, try to open up the goalie again, but lost the handle right before, right in the slot. And so, everything looks like everything down low for Roysom is kind of no game for the Ducks. Another must save for Howry. It's Clark for the Generals. And he lost the puck, didn't even get the shot off. But it's not gonna matter if the Ducks can't score. It's a really shitty plug. 
Here it comes. All right, we're back. You didn't miss Charn anything. Charnholm. Charnholm moving in. Needs to score and does. Yeah, nice and easy. Just came down, shoot, block our side. Yeah, these Deeks aren't going to fool Royce them that much, so looks like Ducks are just going to go straight to shooting. Again, though, must save for Howry. 22, Hennen. Howry makes the save! Great Big save stop. by Jackson. Yeah, huge stop. Hennen tried to go five hole on that and denied and here comes Horline had a good game so far from a must save to a must score Connor Hornline moving in save made Jens win yeah Hornline tried to go five hole on that and denied by a, what a monster game by Roysom as the Jens celebrated on the ice so kind of mistakes back and forth between both teams how to go extra time and into a shootout but I really like what I saw from Royson on the gens and I really like the Ducks D and goaltending looks solid for most of the night and, you know it took a shoot shootout to win the game and Ducks offense had its moments as well so I think just crisper passing and chemistry will definitely go a long way for this team as they kind of start to adjust for the beginning of the season. Yeah, and, and, you know, it was a great first game. Obviously, you want the win for the Ducks. They've got a chance to even the series. Tomorrow, we want to thank one more time our sponsors, Radar Toys, Brothers Plumbing, and other supporters, including Sizzle Pie, Overhead Door, and Oregon Community Credit Union. And all of you watching at home as well. My name is Isaac Rosenthal. I've been joined by Brent Kelly. Our final score tonight in a shootout, Generals 4, Ducks 3.